welcome. Merry Christmas in July, and come on in. It's 99 degrees out here, but it's gonna be a little cooler inside. So happy to see you. Come on. Oh, I'm so happy you stopped by. You know, last year, I wasn't very ready. I was very rushed at the end of the year. So I'm recommending, and I don't always do it, to get started now. I want you to come and sit down with me and by the fireplace, I won't have a fire going today, but I have a few things I'd like to show you about gifts that you can make, crafts that you can do, starting now. You know, Moosey's mom, many, many years ago, said that you should always have a little bit of Christmas in your home all year round. And this is our little bit of Christmas. Each one of these ornaments is one of the days of Christmas. Isn't it cute? And this is over a doorway into our little cottage bedroom, very tiny cottage that is about 80 years old, 90 years old. We love it. Well, come on, sit down over there and we'll talk a little bit about some of the crafts that I put in our video today. A lot of them are very easy. Little crafts like making the little ornaments to put on the trees. You we did this last year and all the 20 grandchildren and all the six kids have the ornaments on their tree. They did start last year. Um, another one was a cute one that we did several years ago. We took a nature walk with some of the kids and we picked up twigs and we picked up little flat stones, some black ones and some white ones. And we made a, is that tic-tac-toe? little games cost nothing. The other thing we did was we picked up some um, pieces of driftwood, small ones, and we made some wind chimes with um, everything from painted keys. Just take a bunch of keys, paint them different colors, string them. You can even do these with your grandkids or your kids. Now a lot of my gifts I do rely on the thrift shops only because you can get great things in a thrift shop for pennies compared to what you might pay. The other place I love, I love Hobby Lobby for unusual decor and trims and things. Now, I mentioned in the video that I started making these memory stockings and I will tell you why I call them memory stockings. I started about 40 years ago and I've since made 50 plus stockings for all the grandkids, all the great grandkids. And every year when a new baby is born, I make a new one. I think I mentioned last, last Christmas, before Christmas, I made six new ones. They're made of velvet and I line them with anything uh, that I might have around or go to Joann's and buy quilted fabric or fleece is less expensive. And you just cut out a stocking, make them nice and large because the kids love large stockings. And these stockings happen to be Moose's and my original stockings, 83 years old. And I superimpose them on velvet stockings, put a little pocket at the bottom for secret things Santa might put in. And we put our unusual little keepsakes on these. Now I'm showing you mine and I have little things from my teaching days. So, and let me show you Moosey's. His is noisy and heavy and I'm gonna stand up and show you this. Look at some of these things. He has some of his decorations from Mrs. Days when he was in the army. He has, what else Moosey? He's sitting over there in a chair. What is this? Something from Fort Knox, Kentucky. Yeah. Um, pictures of the kids from their sports that they've given him. One of my trips when I was in, uh, in, in uh, Las Vegas, 
made a lot of trips. A lot of them affiliated with the railroad. Yeah. Oh, and this is his dog tags. And I show in our video many of the stockings that the kids and the grandkids have had for years and years and they put all their wonderful little things on them. It's not really hard to make these. You just get a pattern and fill them out. But if you like the idea of a memory stocking and you want to make these, then purchase, probably maybe in a, a, a dime store or dollar store, no dime stores anymore, right? I'm dating myself. Um, Purchase the stockings, but they should be nice. I make mine of velvet. Um, I know you can buy beautiful stockings. We took all the kids to Ireland twice for Christmas. We stayed in an old castle, and I, one of these days before Christmas, hopefully, I will get that video up. And I made these placemats out of felt. I put a felt Christmas tree on, decorated with um, sequins and puffy paints put a pretty star and put the names on every placemat. And these are very old and they've been washed several times, but everyone that went to Ireland had a placemat. These are cute for you to make too. This is an idea. You can pick up cute little bags. Look at this bag. I bought quite a few of these in a dollar store last year. They're little felt bags for little tiny presents that you might make. For instance, um, we paint rocks in this video, I'll show you how to do that. And this would be cute to fill up with some of your painted rocks or maybe your little tic-tac-toe set. So I hope you enjoy all of these tips. There's probably 10 or 12 in there. And I have several more to come that I'm probably going to do a part two. Part two is going to include some Shutterfly books that we made for the kids about our ancestors, about our present life with thousands of photographs, a lot of text, and I think you'll enjoy them all our growing up years too. The other one is something that Moose reminds me of often throughout the year. Last year, I saw a great idea how to make beautiful wind chimes out of silverware. All sorts of things from the kitchen. And for months, I collected spoons and forks and knives and cutlery, little tin teacups, even china teacups. The ideas are just in my mind swimming around. And of course, I needed some tools. Uh, over the years, our tools sort of disappeared to the kids. So we went out to Home Depot. What did we buy, Moose? <laughs> I don't know, but we still haven't used them. I know. He bought me a drill because you have to drill a hole in the top of the spoons to be able to hang the spoons from a tea kettle or whatever, whatever you're gonna use for the top of your... Um, I'm going to do a tutorial demo for this particular craft because I think it's very special. Enjoy this video. I'm sure that you can do at least five or six of these. Another lovely one is the charcuterie board. This is, I don't know whether this is something new. It was to me last year and our daughter's husband, Barry, made some of these for a family wedding. and you make the charcuterie board. You can make this out of a beautiful 12 inch wide, maybe 30 inch long piece of wood. Many things you're gonna be able to make and you have to get going now. Today is the very last day of July. I just made it and keep going all year. Enjoy your crafting.
These memory stockings are my very own invention, and I started making them over 40 years ago. I think I've made probably over 50 by now. After cutting, I sew the velvet to the lining and then begin to decorate. Grandson, Colin, was recently married, so his wife qualified for a new stocking this year. And she has a darling little dachshund hot dog dog named Slinky and I found fleece fabric. There's one more slinky on the pocket. Isn't that a cute one? All of our daughters and most of the granddaughters have pieces of my wedding dress on them. The best part of all is seeing how all the children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren decorate their stockings. They put all of their memorabilia and everything on the stockings. Actually, when you think about it, it's a great place to save all those things that mean a lot to them, and they never get lost like they might otherwise. I hope you can see these cute garden stakes in the background. I'm gonna bring some up. I wanna show you, these are the cutest idea. The basic color has been done with a semi-gloss latex paint, and that will weather better over the years. And then I'm just making the letters with acrylic paint, but I will go over everything probably with a varathane or something strong to have them last. that come in 50 in a bundle for Actually, anyone can do this craft. This is so easy, painting these stakes for the garden. And also the rock painting. It's enjoyable, it's fun, and everybody loves them. Very creative, by the way. As you look at some of these, you really notice that the shape of the rock goes with the design. My rock nativity scene is a work in progress and I still haven't painted Joseph yet. He's coming along. I finally found the, the right rock for the shape that I needed. But look at these animals and Mary, there she is, baby Jesus. This has been fun but I do have to finish it. Thrift store Barbie dolls can be used for everything. You can make clothing, anything for these dolls. This one, I love doing. It was very, very special for a granddaughter getting married. I personalized the following Santa Claus with a frame and some cute little ornaments and a fire truck for a fireman. I've been painting a few wooden candlesticks, large ones, and they're fun to do and decorate for the holidays. Here I've just shown you my Christmas trifle. Get a recipe for a trifle and make it for the holidays. Of course, all the baked goods. You don't have to start in July, but you do have to start collecting the beautiful pewter bread trays that you can get in a thrift shop for pennies. A lot of my cookbooks will be gifted this Christmas. Moose is an avid reader and loves and collects his books, and he does enjoy gifting his books to the children and grandchildren during birthdays and especially at Christmas. We did make 
a video last Christmas about gifting your treasures to your children and grandchildren, I'd suggest you go back and watch it. There's some wonderful ideas. The kids, especially the boys, just love sport blankets. I bought the actual teams online, and then I bought fur at Joann's and lined the backs. Very easy to do. One of the collections that I was obsessed with years ago was a pie bird. And pie birds are put into the middle of a pie when you bake it to allow the steam to rise. I had a lot of fun with the great grandchildren doing this. And if you have a collection of some sort, use it in conjunction with your baking. Our daughter Margie has a chicken coop and she gifts dozens of eggs and her husband Mike pickles the eggs. She also does canning of pickles and vegetables and gifts those as well and people love that. If you have a little one who loves dressing up, even wearing costumes to school, then do stop by the thrift shop, but go in September and pick up your costumes at that time, especially those Disney princess ones. Painting, thrift shop furniture, things that you can pick up is a fun project and quite easy. And then sewing, of course, the bedding for something, especially a little cradle for a little girl. Bookcases are for everyone and you can pick up all kinds of children's books. This particular gift idea I'm dying to do, I haven't made these yet, but you make wind chimes from all kinds of silver, tea kettles, spoons, everything in the world that you can think of from a kitchen, and they're beautifully made, but you do need a few tools to do this, and I will be doing a tutorial demo soon. These are a few of my gifting your treasures to children ideas, and it goes along with cleaning out your clutter, beautiful things you've had for ages but no longer have room for, and you can gift these to all the family members. They actually love a lot of these things that you have had for ages and ages. I've always loved my samplers and my kitchen memorabilia and especially kitchen cooking books. I do have a beautiful collection of small plates that I still do enjoy. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm so happy you were here with me today. And I hope that you uh, will come back for part two. We're going to do the demo on the silver wind chimes and um, hopefully maybe a little bit about the Shutterfly books. Please consider subscribing if you've enjoyed this and share and comment down below. Happy Christmas in July. Keep on working and get out to those thrift shops. God bless you all. See you in our next video.